Now let's start today's China Currents. Our first story is about a brand new type of visa that China began issuing on October 1st, the K-Visa. Indian media has expressed strong interest in K-Visa, which has emerged as a promising alternative for Indian talents affected by Trump's visa restrictions. Inside China, however, it has sparked mixed reactions. According to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, this visa is designed mainly for foreign young tech talent under 40 years old, especially in fields such as artificial intelligence, engineering, and biotechnology. Aside from requirements on age, education, or work experience, the K visa does not require a job offer or invitation from a Chinese employer. Approval can be completed in as little as 15 days, and the visa is valid for up to five years. This means that young foreign professionals can use the K-Visa to seek internships with Chinese companies or even start their own ventures here, drawing on China's advanced manufacturing, R&D environment, and vast pool of researchers to create innovative tech products. Unsurprisingly, the K-Visa has quickly attracted global attention. The New York Times wrote that a new visa program targeting science and engineering talents is part of China's effort to become a global technology leader. Reuters and others noted that the K-Visa has generated its strongest enthusiasm in India. Indian media even declared that Beijing's message is clear. Stop fuzzing around, pack your bags, China will give you plenty of opportunities. Inside China, reactions are mixed. On the one hand, people are happy to welcome foreign talent. On the other hand, some worry that shady agencies might exploit loopholes and bringing unqualified applicants. Overall, though, China has taken another step toward a more open and inclusive environment for global tech talent. Now we turn to a new railway line that just opened. On October 3rd, local time, the Novi Sad to Sabotica section of the Hungary-Serbia railway officially began operation, marking a full opening of the Serbian section. This railway is a flagship project of China Central and Eastern Europe Corporation. It is also the first railway project using Chinese-developed technology and equipment that has been certified under the EU's interoperability standards. The line runs 341.7 kilometers, 183.1 kilometers in Serbia, designed for 200 km per hour speed, and 158.6 kilometers in Hungary, designed for 160 km per hour. Construction continues on the Hungarian side. With the Serbian section now open, travel time from Belgrade to the border city of Sabotica has been cut from over 5 hours to as little as 1 hour and 19 minutes. Media reports note that for students in Novi Sad or Belgrade, commuting daily, especially with annual passes, could now be cheaper than renting an apartment in the city. The line could reshape social and economic ties between towns along the route and major cities, a pattern long proven by China's high-speed rail. Beyond improving efficiency, the project is also benefiting the local economy by creating jobs, sourcing materials, and training a new generation of talent in high-speed rail development and operation. And that's not the only railway story. On September 29th, in Beijing, China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation signed a deal to invest about 1.4 billion US dollars to upgrade the historic Tanzara Railway, reshaping Africa's vital copper transport corridor. The project will add 34 locomotives, 16 passenger coaches, and 760 freight wagons, boosting capacity for mineral shipments. The original Tanzara Railway, built with Chinese aid in the 1970s, linked Tanzania's Dar es Salaam with Kapiri Mposhi in Zambia. At 1,860 kilometers long, it created a crucial export route for Zambian copper and cobalt to the Indian Ocean, and has stood as a monument to China-Africa friendship. Now let's follow Chinese state media inside the hangars of two stealth fighters. Recently, China Central Television CCTV aired exclusive footage from the J-35 hangar showing an unpainted J-35A. The report not only revealed close-up details of the fighter, but also featured an interview with the chief designer, Sun Tong, who explained the core technologies in simple terms. The host described the J-35 as having an integrated design built specifically for carrier operations with the ability to launch by catapult of ski jump. Sun Tong emphasized that the J-35's defining feature is stealth, reducing detectability, avoiding early discovery, and securing the advantage of I see you first, I strike you first. CCTV also introduced the J-35A, which together with the J-35 forms China's stealth combat system. 
The J-35A is primarily an air superiority fighter with secondary ground attack capabilities. Its main mission is to seize and control airspace, neutralizing enemy fighters, air defenses on land or sea, and intercepting hostile jets, bombers, or cruise missiles. Not long ago, China's nearest aircraft carrier, the Fujian, conducted electromagnetic catapult and arrested landing tests with multiple new generation carrier aircraft, including the J-35, once again drawing global attention. The official report this time offered a rare glimpse into China's defense system, as such aircraft and hangars are usually seen only in blurry amateur photos. Next, let's look at China's progress in green energy. China is no longer satisfied with just solar and wind. It has taken a major step toward nuclear fusion power, with hopes of lighting the first bulb with fusion electricity by 2030. On October 1st, the Creostat base of the best fusion device was successfully installed. About 18 meters in diameter and weighing nearly 400 tons, it will support the 6,700-ton main machine, essentially serving as the foundation of the entire reactor. The milestone signals the start of large component installation. Next will come the magnets, vacuum vessel, and other critical parts, all mounted on the base. Eventually, the structure will be sealed into the vacuum environment needed for controlled fusion. Unlike today's fission-based nuclear power plant, fusion mirrors the sun's process of generating energy, highly efficient with enormous potential. Just one liter of seawater if its deuterium is fused, could produce the energy equivalent to 300 liters of gasoline. Harnessing Earth's seawater could provide humanity with clean energy for millions of years without greenhouse gases or nuclear waste. But breakthroughs have proven elusive for more than 70 years. Take ITER in southern France, the world's largest international fusion project involving more than 30 countries, including China. Its progress has been repeatedly delayed with ignition now targeted no earlier than 2034. Encouragingly, BEST's construction speed could accelerate humanity's timeline for using fusion energy. According to plan, BEST will finish assembly in 2027, then spend about three years overcoming key technical hurdles with the goal of demonstrating the chain of fusion energy to electrical energy by 2030, lighting an indicator lamp powered by fusion. Finally, let's talk about some of the off-duty stars of this year's China National Day, both human and non-human. October 1st was China's National Day. On this very day, China's Tianwen-2 probe en route through space took a break to send home a photo. The picture shows the Chinese flag, the white return capsule, and Earth in the background, a memento of its 125 days in orbit. Tianwen-2 is on course to exploit asteroid 2016-HO3 and main belt comet 311P. On National Day, it was 43 million kilometers from Earth and 45 million kilometers from its first target asteroid. Back on Earth, Chinese travelers were also on the move. In just the first five days of the holiday, China's railway carried over 100 million passengers. Government cafeterias that chose to open during the National Day holiday became an unexpected stop on tourist sightseeing routes. For example, a government canteen in Rongchang District, Chongqing, witnessed an influx of 2,700 tourists, who together consumed a total of 275 kg of rice and 125 kg of stewed goose. One visitor said three of them ordered nine dishes in total, costing only 58 yuan. That's about eight US dollars. Other cities also opened government cafeterias, offered free parking or free bus rides, all to win travelers' hearts. In Nanchang, Jiangxi province, a policeman spent his day taking photos for tourists at Baiyi Square, where he was stationed. Because his post was relatively elevated and offered a good vantage point, thousands of visitors have asked him to take their pictures. Online, someone compared him to a mother bird feeding chicks, and a picture went viral with tens of thousands of likes. Not everything was cheerful. Two young tourists in their 20s were harshly criticized nationwide for carving their names into the Great Wall at Sima Tai. Even when other visitors tried to intervene, they continued, and the police later detained and fined them. And that's all for today. See you next time. <laughs>